It's personal. How many know he brought you out? You brought, brought me. You brought me out. Without a doubt, how many know he brought you? Brought me, brought me out. My mind was messed up, but he brought, brought me. And I can't take it for granted. I just want to thank. said listen he saved mine that's personal right there how many glad you saved if you saved help me say you saved I was lost all my way to eternal hell ah, but he saved me my 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 my, my lost soul Stay right there. I want to thank you for my good days and my bad days. Woo. For my ups and all of my downs. All the tears I've shed. Woo. I want to thank you, Jesus. You've been a mother to the motherless. You've been bread on my table. Let's say it one more time. Reach way down and everybody said, I just to thank you. Here we are. Come on and give him a praise. I didn't say give me a praise. I said, come on and give him a praise. Listen, while you're standing, reach and grab your Bible right quick, everybody, while you're standing. Grab your Bible right quick and turn with me to Romans 10. We're going to read that together. Romans 10. Verse 1 and 2. When you arrive at that place, just say I'm there. Listen, I want to, let's read that together. You may begin. My heart's Verse two. The zeal of God. Zeal of God. And let us move down to the ninth and tenth verse, and then we're going to be ready to pray. Let us read that. Confession is made unto salvation. How many thank God tonight for salvation? Yeah. Eternal God, we come now. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, we want to say we thank you for this new year. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see a day that we've never seen before. Oh, Lord, we thank you now. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for your life. We thank you for the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray now that you would just wash us thoroughly from our sins. Cleanse us from all of our iniquities. Lord, if you don't do nothing else but create within us a clean heart. Lord, right now. Lord, we pray now that your spirit will reign in this house. Whatever situation somebody may be dealing with, I pray now, Lord, that you give them victory right now. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus. God, we plead the blood against cancer, against high blood pressure today. Migraine headache, we bind you right now. In the name of Jesus. And we declare victory in this house. Lord, we pray now for a double portion upon every speaker that's going to stand and proclaim your word, God. 
Oh God, we pray now that you let them down into the treasures of your word. Oh God, give us a heart to receive. We call it done in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Come on, give God another hand praise. He is the proud pastor of the Beulah Baptist Church. And not only does he stand tall, but he preaches tall. Come on, put your hands together for our last preacher of the morning. That in the person of Pastor J.J. Rector, the third, I need y'all to pray for him now. Come on, come on, come on. It's the last one. Pray for his strength. Has thou not known? Has thou not heard? That the Lord, everlasting God, Lord the Creator, fainteth not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increaseth their strength. Even the youth shall get weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, mount up on wings as with eagles, run, not get weary, walk, and not faint. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He's good, I tell you. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. We bless the name of our God for allowing us this blessed privilege once more and again to see the dawning of a new year. Oh, how the Lord has kept us. There were those that started out with us on last year. And they are not with us this year. Look at somebody and say, thank God for grace. Thank God for mercy. And he has allowed us to come together one more time. What can I say about my pastoral brothers? Give all these preachers a hand. I mean, my God. <sighs> True, the Lord has used all of them in their own unique way. And we are so glad that the Lord is allowing, as Pastor Murray has so eloquently put it, a shift. Uh, to occur in this community amongst us pastoral brethren. Amen. I am the baby of them all, but nevertheless, God is still good, and uh, I'm so grateful for their friendship, and I'm grateful for the relationship we have with one another. Let's say amen for these musicians, amen, who have helped us uh, John and John, amen. God bless y'all. God bless you. Thank you so much. Let us bow. It's me again, Jesus. I've been talking to you all day. I ask that you give me strength, O oh Heavenly Father, to preach your word. I can't preach unless you give me power. I can't sing unless you give me strength. 
Right now, I ask that you would anoint these lips of clay. I ask that you would give strength to my voice and my vocal cords. I ask, O oh God, that you would hold my head and think with my mind. I ask that you would hold my heart steady. Keep my feet on the ground, lest I get beside myself. When praises come forth, O oh Heavenly Father, we all, will be ever so careful and ever so cautious to lift up our hands and give all of the praise, honor, and glory unto you. For you are worthy of it all. We love you so much. Speak with me, speak through me, speak to me, and speak for me. Please let the words of my mouth, meditations of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are my strength. You are my redeemer. We count it down. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Second Kings. Second Kings. Chapter 19. We want to look at verses 14 through 19. Then we want to skip down and read verses 32 and 33. And I say to you, like Queen Elizabeth told her second husband, I will not hold you long. Second King, chapter 19, verses 14 through 19, and 32 and 33. And it reads on this wise. And Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messenger and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwellest between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. Thou hast made heaven and earth. Lord, bow down thine ear and hear. Open, Lord, thine eyes and see. And hear the words of Sennacherib, which hath sent him to reproach the living God. Of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations and their lands and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore, they have destroyed them. Now, therefore, O Lord our God, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. Verses 32 and 33. Reads on this wise, therefore thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shield, nor cast a bank against it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and shall not come into this city, saith the Lord. He may be seated. Presence of the Lord. 
with your prayers and with your amens, with your smiling faces, I am to talk to you on this morning from these words, facing the fear factor. Facing the fear factor. Those of us who are blood bought, twice born, and baptized, name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. We all should be aware that if we love God and if we are serious as it relates to being sold out for the cause of Christ, we ought to know and understand that God requires that there be a sense of constant and consistent spiritual evolvement. God requires that we be spiritually on the grow each and every day of our life. You ought to want to be better today than you were on yesterday. You ought to want to be better this year than you were on last year. You ought to want to grow and get stronger in the faith and get stronger in Christ. But watch it now. The higher you grow in the Lord, the stronger you become in the faith. How many of you know the heart of the enemy will attack you? And I'm sure I have about four or five witnesses around this house. When you look back on your BC days, before Christ entered into your life, when you were doing everything and anything you thought you were big and bad enough to do, you can honestly look back on your BC days and say the devil really wasn't bothering you. But as soon as you made a decision to come to church and read his word and pay your tithes and treat your brothers and your sisters right. That's when the enemy began to attack you harder than he has ever attacked you before. And I come to serve notice on every one of us on today that when you are growing in the matchless and miraculous name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, the reason why you ought to not run from the attack of the enemy is because while the enemy is attacking you, God has already given you the strength to be able to survive the attack. Uh, somebody around this house ought to shake your neighbor's hand and say, I'm a survivor. I'm, I'm, uh, look at somebody else and say, he's brought me through this. Uh, he's brought me through that. Uh, I am a survivor, and as I think about being a survivor for the Lord, I recall what Jesus said unto Simon Peter in the gospel according to Luke chapter number 22. He said, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you because he wants to sift you as wheat. I feel a little better around here now. He says, but don't you worry about that boy because I have prayed for you. And isn't it a wonderful thing to know that no matter what we go through, Jesus has already prayed for us. And he prayed for us in the garden of Gethsemane when he said, Lord, if it be thy will, let this bitter cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not as I will, but let thy will be done. And since Jesus has prayed for me, since Jesus has given me power, since Jesus has given my life assignment, there is no attack that the enemy can put in my life that the Lord will not give me victory over. Over. Somebody around this house ought to lift up your hands right now and say, I thank God that Jesus has given me the power to survive the attack. And no matter what the enemy tries to use to scare me away from doing what God has called me to do, I'm not going to let the devil defeat me and take me away from what God has assigned me to do. If God said it, then that settles it. 
somebody ought to shake your neighbor's hand and say, whatever God has spoken over your life, it shall come to pass. Uh, have I got about five or ten folk in here that can get up on your feet uh, and say, I know what he said. Uh, he said I was blessed. Uh, he said I was delivered. He said I was the head. Uh, he said I was the tail. Uh, and I'm giving God praise right now uh, because I know what he said. Uh, shake your neighbor's hand uh, and say, I may look bad to you, uh, but I know what the Lord said. Uh, I may not look like much right now, uh, but I give him praise uh, because I know what he said. When you know what he has said, when you know the Lord has spoken assignment over your life, uh, then there is no tactic that the enemy can use against you that can cause you to be fearful and prohibit you from walking in the purpose that God has ordained for your life. For those of you that have not said amen yet, I'm about to get to the text, but can I tell you the reason why we ought to not walk in fear is because uh, God has not given us what? The spirit of fear. But he has given us power, love, and a sound mind. Here we find a young man by the name of King Hezekiah. Hezekiah is just 25 years old and he is reigning as king over Judah. Now you must know and understand as it relates to Hezekiah's reign, he is reigning over Judah and the kingdom that he is reigning over is not the same kingdom that Solomon and David reigned and ruled over. Because at the time of this story, at the time of this text, my brothers and my sisters, uh, the kingdom of Israel had been divided into the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The north northern kingdom had 10 tribes and that kingdom's name was called Israel and the southern kingdom had two tribes and that kingdom was called Judah and that's who Hezekiah was reigning over at just 25 years of age let me say it to you again Israel had 10 kingdoms but Judah had only two kingdoms and there was a crazy fella by the name of King Sennacherib who ran around like a roaring lion trying to defeat the people of our true and living God. And according to Old Testament survey, we find where King Sennacherib, brothers and sisters, was successful somewhat in defeating people using his intimidation tactics uh, that he had acquired over time because he was a bully and he wanted to do everything and anything in his power to defeat the people of the Lord but as I preach this sermon on this afternoon I get great joy and the reason why I get great joy because that young fella named King Hezekiah he said I don't care how big and how bad old King Sennacherib is I don't care what he has destroyed I don't care what he has done I choose to believe in the power of the true and living God and can I tell you how you get the Lord to move on your behalf uh, is in the midst of your adversity in the midst of negative circumstances in the midst of situations rocking and reeling and trying to knock you off course when you stand flat on 